Good evening and kingdom blessings. I welcome you to Tuesday Night in the Word with Elder Phadrian. Please come on into this teaching room. If you would, please like, tag, share, and invite others. I welcome you into Tuesday Night in the Word with Elder Phadrian. For those that may be your first time viewing, we are Faith Church International, and tonight is our Bible study. Tonight, we will be looking in the area of salvation as the Lord segmented us into salvation on Sunday. And our topic tonight is about sharing your faith, sharing your faith. And as I reflect on sharing our faith, um, what if you were approached by a non-believer and you had the opportunity to share your relationship with Christ with them? What would you say? How would you present it? So tonight, I pray that this um, lesson will be a tool in preparation towards us sharing our faith with others. Um, this will be a series, a series of sharing our faith that we may know how to be effective um, in the disciple making process. If you would please like, tag, share, and invite others. And before we go into tonight's teaching, I just want to share this. Um, there's a song by the Williams Brothers. And as I was writing um, today, I heard the lyrics of one of the verses. It says, my soul was sinking in a world of sin, but grace and mercy, through grace and mercy, he took me in. He pulled my feet out of the miry clay and placed my feet on a rock to stay. Oh, what a relief it was when Christ rescued me. He loosed the chains that had me bound and he set me free. Then they began to go into the chorus that when the Lord set them free, it felt like cooling water from their grandmother's well. Well, I pray tonight that this word find you well, that this lesson find you well. And if you be one that is still entangled with the um, law, if you're still entangled with the yoke of sin, I pray that this word tonight will bring liberation, that it will bring freedom because we will know that God loves us and he already did the work. All we have to do is receive the gift. Let us pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, as I come before your presence tonight, I lift up you, Father, because you're worthy to be lifted up. High and lifted up in the earth. And Lord, I pray on tonight that the words that you will have me to minister, that it will come forth with holy boldness, that it will come forth with clarity, and Lord, that it will come forth with your anointing, Father God, that it will be spoken with uh, power, that your people will hear your words tonight, even through the mouthpiece that you're using by the name Phadrian. Lord, I pray that you will be glorified and honored. Lord, I just pray right now on tonight for those who are sick, those who are in the hospital, those that are in the nursing home. Lord, today I received a prayer request for bills. So, Lord, I pray right now that by your Holy Spirit, that you will give your um, power and instruction and also understanding to the doctors that will be caring for Bill. Lord, I also pray for those that have lost loved ones. I pray that you will be peace and comfort to those who are bereaved in family. Not only do I pray for Bill, but I even pray for those that I don't know by name, Father God. But you know every person that is in this earth realm because you have breathed the breath of life into mankind and there's nothing that happens without your knowledge so father god i pray that you'll move in the hospitals that you will move in the nursing home that you will move in our individual homes those that may be lying on their bed of affliction lord i even pray for those that are battling sickness but able to be up and active lord i pray that you will give us wisdom knowledge and understanding on how to care for ourselves of the things that we are to drink of the things that we are to eat and those things that we should put away from us that you will give us wisdom and that you will give us strength to put them away from us and i'm always mindful to give you glory to give you honor and to give you praise amen amen and amen god bless you hello brother um deal if you would would you please share
if you would now share this live um, and tag my name so that those who um, normally will view it from my page that they'll be able to see it. If you would please share tonight's live um, while I'm actually teaching so those that may not have a connection to Faith Church International that they'll be able to watch this live as I teach it tonight. Amen. On um, Sunday, we shared a few scriptures, and I would like to recount Sunday um, before we get into tonight's teaching. But our um, topic tonight is sharing your faith. Sharing your faith is vitally important that not only do we um, go um, to the household of faith and to learn of God for ourselves, but we are to also be active uh, participants on the mission field. Now, not everyone is um, have a calling um, where they're solely tied to the mission field of missionary. However, we all are called to be um, disciple makers. We are all called to share our faith with others. And one of the scriptures that um, I shared on that I shared on Sunday was Mark 16 and 16. But I would like to begin with Mark 16 verses 15 and 16. It reads, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. Again, Mark 16 verses 15 and 16 says, and this was Jesus speaking. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. Um, our topic tonight is the sharing. Would you share your faith? Well, if you would jot this down, Philemon 1 and 6. Philemon 1 and 6 says, and I pray that the sharing of your faith may become effective for the full knowledge of every good thing that is in us for the sake of Christ. I pray that the sharing of your faith may become effective for the full knowledge of every good thing that is in us for the sake of Christ. I'm so excited about this lesson tonight, and I pray that um, it will ignite us to be those who will share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Like I said, you don't have to be one that is tagged as a minister or a missionary, but we are all called to the field of making disciples. Um, the late Billy Graham says, our faith becomes stronger as we express it. A growing faith is a sharing faith. And what I found about us sharing something, if we're going to talk about it, guess what we're going to do? We're going to prepare ourselves to talk about it. So indeed, our faith becomes stronger as we express it. When we prepare ourselves to know what we're talking about, we want to share it. So we're going to study so we will not um, cause ourselves to feel foolish. So indeed... A sharing faith is a growing faith, or a growing faith is a sharing faith. Um, one of the first scriptures that we used on Sunday night was Romans 3.23. And I would like to reflect on this scripture because someone um, asked the question, um, am I saved? Well, automatically, we're not saved just because we were born into the world. Quite the opposite. Romans 3.23 says, all... For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. This is Romans 3.23. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So it explains that the punishment that we have earned for our sins is death. But just physical death, not just physical death, but eternal death. So when we were born into this world, 
we were already formed and shaping in iniquity because of the sins that was committed by Adam and Eve. So therefore, we need God in order to be saved. We need God to go from death unto life. Romans 5 and 8, which will be one of our key scriptures tonight, says, but God demonstrates his own love towards us and that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. Now, I think it's so important for us to look at Romans 5 and 8 because for those that don't yet have a relationship with God, you can feel like you have no hope. But I come to um, teach tonight that Jesus Christ indeed is our hope. And we can find about our hope in Romans 5 and 8. Let me read it again. But God commended his love towards us. I do apologize. My phone rung. I had to put it on do not disturb. Let me go back in case you didn't hear that scriptures. Romans 5 and 8. We're re repeating it again. But God commended his love towards us. And that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So please do not feel like we have no hope for Jesus Christ is our hope. Our hope and our salvation lies in Jesus Christ. Well, on Sunday, we looked at John 3.16. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life, eternal life. Now, I want you to know that that life begins the very moment that you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Our relationship with God is... It's vitally important for us to go from death unto life. It is vitally important for us to have and live a life of victory. Um, before we go um, deeper into the text of tonight, on Sunday, we also so shared that we must believe in God in order to be saved. We must believe in our heart and confess with our mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. Then we have to go further that we will look at the fact that he died on the cross and that he rose for you and I and he gave us the victory. Um, on Sunday, um, we looked at Acts the 16th chapter where the prisoner, uh, prison guard had fallen asleep and Paul and Silas began to pray and they began to sing hymns. And when they began to pray and sing hymns, although they were in the lower part of the prison and they were chained down when they began to pray and when they began to sing that not only the shackles that was holding them bound, they were loose. Even the prison doors, all the prison doors were open. They began to sing songs of from the Holy Spirit. And they began to pray according to the Holy Spirit. And those who heard, they were in such astoundment, they didn't even run out. They didn't even try to escape because they were in the presence of the living God. I want you to know that God still operates in that same authority, that same power, that if you're bound by anything, if you begin to pray, if you begin to communicate with God, if you begin to sing hymns, sing spiritual hymns, pick up um, a hymn book or look on Google and look at the songs. If you grew up in church and you heard those songs from your mother and your grandmother and you begin to sing those hymns, if your father was a deacon or grandfather, Father, you may have grown up hearing those songs of him. They are powerful and they are yet effective even in this modern day. The same way that prayer and hymns allow the prison doors to be open and the shackles to be released. God is able to do that in your life. Whatever seemed to have you bound, begin to pray. 
Begin to sing hymns. God will even give you lyrics to sing. That's the kind of God we serve. I'm talking about us sharing our faith. But we have to get built up in our own selves that we will be equipped to go out and share with others. John 3.36 from Sunday night. It says, whoever believes in the son has eternal life. And whoever does not obey the son shall not see life. But the wrath of God remains on him. See, when we entered into the world, um, we were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. So that means that the punishment of death was upon us even as we exited out of our mother's womb. Now that may seem so cruel, but God always make a way of escape. God always make a way of escape. And how does he make the way? The word of God says that he is the way. He is the truth. And he is the life. It's not that he made a pattern, a path, a pattern. But he is the path. He is the pattern. He is the way. Now let us go back to Romans, the fifth chapter. I want to read. Um, Romans, the fifth chapter, verses 8 through 11. Verses, um, Romans, the fifth chapter, verses 8 through 11. We already read, read verse 8. And let us repeat it again. But God commanded his love towards us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through him. Now, John 3.36 says, Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. And whoever does not obey the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God remains on him. Let me repeat verse 9 again of Romans 5. It says, But more than... Being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through him. So how are we saved from the wrath of God? We are saved through the blood of Jesus Christ. And those that believe in God and those who obey God, who we know in the personage of Jesus Christ, shall see life but if we obey not him and if we don't believe in god if we don't believe in the son who is god then we will receive the wrath of god we're back in romans the fifth chapter let us look at verses 10 through 11 for if when we were enemies we were reconciled to god by the death of his son much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. So just as I said, when we exited out of our mother's womb, we were enemies of God. Yes, we were. But we have now opportunity by the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed on Calvary's Hill over 2,000 years ago. We were reconciled to God by the death of his son. Much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. It was the shedding of the blood of Jesus Christ. It was him giving himself totally on the cross for you and I that we go from death unto life. Verse 11 of Romans 5 says, and not only so, but we also joy in God. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Now, atonement seemed like a big word. So, I wanted to make sure that I, I broke it down so this word would not be um, above us, including myself. Now, um, atonement basically means payment. Jesus rendered a payment for the punishment of sin. He became our reparation. 
He became our compensation. What was due to us, the debt that we owe because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And the things and choices that we made also um, condemned us and made us recipients, rightful recipients of, of death. But Jesus became the payment. He became the compensation. He became the recompense, the reparation for our sins. We have now received the atonement. We received the gift. Now in my study Bible, for verse 9, it says, By laying down his life as a sacrifice, Jesus became death. He took on death for our sins. Jesus took on death for our sins. Let us look at Romans, the third chapter, verse 25. Romans, the third chapter, verse 25 says, Whom God has set forth to be the propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. The propitiation. The one who will turn aside God's wrath is the simple definition for, for propitiation. He is the one, the only one, who did and who was and who is able to turn aside God's wrath by taking away sin. The Greek uh, for this phrase speaks of a sacrifice of a sacrifice that satisfies the righteous wrath of God. Without this appeasement, all people are justly destined for eternal punishment. Without Jesus Christ making this sacrifice for you and for I, we were destined for eternal punishment. We were due eternal damnation. But through saving faith, when we look to Jesus Christ and to his sacrificial death for us, we now become recipients of this great sacrifice. Now, on Sunday, I shared about um, what, how to become a believer. And um, we're going to look at the Romans road tonight just a bit because the book of Romans deal a lot with um having about having a relationship with god and what christ did on the cross for us i want us to know that it's nothing that we can do in ourselves that will make us right before god but god is the he is the righteous and we become righteous through him when we receive him. Now tonight we are partnering um, about sharing our faith with others. If you indeed believe in God, then you have been given the task to become fisher men of people. Matthew the fourth chapter verses 19 and 20 says this. Come follow me. Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once they left their nets and followed him. See, they were out fit, they were out throwing out their nets, casting their nets for fish. But Jesus said, um, indeed, your skill for fishing, we would use that, but not a fish. But I'm going to make you fishers of men, fishers of people. Are you excited about being fishers of men? I mean, what a great thing to share your belief, your faith with God. You know how your life was before you believed in God. I can tell you, I suffered with um, depression. And even though the enemy strives to cause depression sometimes, because I know who I am in God. 
I say no weapon formed against me shall be able to prosper. And every lying tongue that is spoken even in my mind is condemned. That is returned back to the pits of hell sevenfold. See, I learned how to speak that through my relationship with God. I learned how to speak the word of God through being a student of the word of God. This is what I'm talking about. Getting excited, getting pumped up about reading the word of God, growing in the word of God, so we can share our faith with others. Because it's not just, it's it's no good to be at a party by yourself. Who wants to be at a party by their self? And we can look at the kingdom of God being the, the greatest thing, the greatest decision that we have ever made that is going to give us access. It's already given us access to heavenly things that we can call forth heaven's best to be manifested in our midst. We can celebrate because no longer are we condemned to death. No longer are we entangled with the yoke of bondage. No longer are we entangled with the, the law. But now we have transferred from death unto life. We have transferred from law unto grace. Now we have the grace of God that is shed abroad upon us. That the blood is able to do the effective work that it was promised to do once we receive the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that we will get excited about sharing the gospel. I pray that we will get excited about sharing the good news with others. Now, the sharing of the good news didn't just begin in the New Testament. Um, I love that the word of God is confirmed by the word of God. But we can look even back to Psalm 96 verses 2 through 4. Let us look at Psalm 96 verses 2 through 4. I pray that you have your Bible open. I was talking about singing psalms, singing hymns, singing songs that will come up from the Holy Spirit. Well, David was one that we have an account where he will um, be in worship and God would give him songs and those songs are documented. In Psalm 96, it says, sing to the Lord, praise his name. Each day, proclaim the good news that he saves. Publish his glorious deeds among the nation. Tell everyone about the amazing things he's done. Great is the Lord. He is most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods. We have something to celebrate and we have something to share. Would you be excited enough tonight to get equipped, to get e prepared to share the good news with others? 1 Corinthians 9, 16 says, For when I preach the gospel, I cannot boast. I won't be boasting in myself. When, since I am compelled to preach, Woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. See, once we understand that it's our assignment to share the gospel, we have to be mindful to do exactly that. Because it's woe unto us if we do not share the gospel with others. We have been given a great assignment to share the kingdom with others. Now, there's um, a scripture about the Great Commission. And um, this version of Matthew 28, I'm going to read verses 18 through 20. And it reads, Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. It's given to Jesus Christ. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. Verse 20, And surely I am with you always to the very ends of the age. Know that when it's time for you to share the good news, when it's time for you to share your faith, know this, that surely God is with you always to the very end of the age. We don't have to be worried um, if we're going to make a mistake. All we have to do is be willing vessels. And if we're willing, God will equip us. He will give us the ability. 
He gives us power to minister and to share his word. So let us not operate in fear. Because the enemy will strive to bring fear upon us. Because we might say, well, I didn't go to seminary school. I don't have a theological background. Um, I, I don't study the Bible day in and day out from sunup to sundown. I'm not like preacher so-and-so. I'm not like pastor so-and-so. But Isaiah 41 10 tells us this. So do not fear. For I am with you. Do not be dismayed. For I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Know this, that God is with you. He will strengthen you. He will help you and he will uphold you with his righteousness, with his righteous right hand. God will equip you in the sharing of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let us get pumped. Let us get excited about the sharing of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, if there were um, reasons to share, you would share this. That God is for us. That God loves us. Again, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave all of himself. He gave all of himself for you and I. He gave himself that we may have the right to the tree of life. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, because God gave his life for us, we should be willing to render our life over to him. And when we render our life over to him, we should know that there is a God and we have a responsibility to him. Just as I was saying, we, will, um, we have a responsibility to not only be saved, but to share the gospel of Jesus Christ that other people may come unto the saving knowledge of the one who saved us. We should know. That sin separates us from God. So thus we need him. We should know that Jesus never sinned. So he's the best decision maker. He's the best person for us to connect with. Sometimes when, when we want to know about something, we get with someone who's experienced in that area. Well, because we're called to go from um, damnation to righteousness, from death to life, then we should connect with the one who knows all about the know all about life. Um, Jesus never sinned. Romans five nineteen. Let us read Romans five nineteen. Romans five nineteen says, "For as by one man's disobedience, talking about Adam." Many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one, Jesus Christ, shall many be made righteous. We go from death, which brought, was brought in through Adam, and we go unto life when we receive Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. We go from death unto life through receiving him as our personal Lord. Lord and Savior. I thank God for the great sacrifice that he made. We should know that Jesus died to pay for our sins. Um, Romans 6.23. Jesus died to pay for our sins. We read that already, but let us read it again. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our lord let me read that again for the wages of sin is death but the gift of god is eternal life through jesus christ our lord i pray that we will accept the free gift um jesus rose from the dead to prove he could offer us abundant and eternal life 
He rose from the dead to prove he could offer us abundant and eternal life. And let us look at one of the scriptures that we looked at on um, Sunday. Romans 10 verse 9. We're going to look at Romans 10 verse 9 and verse 13. Romans 10 verse 9 says um, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him for the dead, thou shalt be saved. We need to believe that Jesus in Jesus in order to be saved. Our salvation is tied to our belief. Verse 13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I pray that you will call upon the name of the Lord. Just like Paul and Silas did in the prison and liberty came. When you call upon the name of the Lord, liberty comes to those who believe. We need to know that God loves us. That God paid the price for our sin. He became the atonement for us. He gave all of himself for you and I. Would you receive him on tonight if you have not yet received the Lord as your personal Lord and Savior? Tonight is the night of salvation. You no longer have to be entangled with the yoke of sin. You no longer have to be entangled with the yoke of bondage. For St. John 1.12 says, But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to the become children of God. The invitation has been extended to you. It was extended over 2,000 years ago, but it's being brought to you on tonight. If you have not received the Lord as your personal Lord and Savior, it's simply asking God to come in and to dwell in you. It's as simple as saying, Lord, I know that I was apart from you because sin separated me from you. But Lord, I want to be one with you. I want to be connected with you. I want to not only be my mama and my daddy's child, but I want to be your son. Lord, I want to be your daughter. I want to be named as those who are children of God. Now, on Sunday, we shared about the name. It says, who believe in his name. Um, there, there's a time now that many people are looking to the Hebrew um, um, pronunciation of Jesus. And it is Yeshua. Um, the, the, the Hebrew of God is Yahshua. Yeshua. Um, I looked online for the Greek for um, the Greek for Jesus and it's Yahashua, Yahashua and the Yeho means God and the Shua means saves. So simply the name of Jesus Christ means God saves. Um, in uh, Matthew 1 23, it says and his name shall be, and he shall be called Emmanuel, God with us. Know that God is with us and he came to save us. So no longer we have to, no longer do we have to be bound to death. We can receive the gift of the blood of Jesus Christ. And we can receive this gift of salvation tonight. It don't have to be far off from you. Would you receive the Lord Jesus Christ on tonight? I pray this now in the presence of those angelic hosts that will even minister and the Holy Spirit that will minister to you even after we part from this time of teaching. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray for those that are listening on tonight and those who will listen Hashtag replay. If it be anyone under the sound of this teaching, Father God, that has not received you as their personal Lord and Savior. I pray right now by the authority of the blood and by the power of the name of Jesus Christ.
by the power of Yeshua, Yahashua, the Emmanuel, the Most High God, Almighty God, that sin shackles will be broken long enough that they will make a conscious decision to choose you as their personal Lord and Savior. Lord, I thank you, O oh God, that minds are being transformed, that minds are being regulated, Father God, that hearts are being reformed and um, being placed under the knowledge of you, Father God. Lord, I pray that we will have a hunger and thirst after righteousness. And your word says that when we hunger and thirst after righteousness, we will be filled. So, Lord, I thank you, O oh God, that those who had the question, am I saved? They have a hunger, Father God. So, Lord, I thank you, O oh God, that this word will meet that hunger and they will begin to be filled and that their, the eyes of their understanding will be open and that they will have a greater desire to mo know you more and more. And, Lord, I thank you, O oh God, that those who are children of the Most High God, that I pray that tonight's teaching also um, taught us and encouraged us on how to share our faith with others. And we ever mindful to give you glory, to give you honor, and to give you praise. And it's in Jesus Christ's name I do pray. Amen, amen, and amen. To God be the glory. I pray that you will join me on Sunday morning. It will be Communion Sunday. If you would, I prepare to have your elements. If you are local and um, if you would like to receive communion with Faith Church International, I would ask that you um, re re would respond on this thread or through inbox to me. And um, we will make sure um, to um, give you knowledge on how to um, get those elements and so we can be prepared to receive communion together on Sunday morning at 8 a.m. Central Standard Time. We will be um, having worship service this Sunday morning at 8 a.m. Central Standard Time. And we will also partake in communion together with one another. I would like to say thank you to Brother Deal and also to um, Barriana. Thank you for listening in on tonight. And I would also like to thank anyone who will be a part of Hashtag Replay and those who will also be willing to share this, um, live, this broadcast, this live on your individual pages. I pray that the Lord be with you and that we will remain in his presence. Even though we depart from this time of teaching, we will not depart from the presence of the Most High God. I pray that you all be strengthened the more in your faith walk with God. This will conclude our time of teaching and fellowship. God loves you and so do I. Good night.